Tulip Bubble, how to set up and play. To set up, you'll lay out the market board on the game table. You'll place the black tulip, or the queen of the night, on its board spot. You'll shuffle the deck of tulip cards, and you'll deal cards to each of these three spots. The next shipment spot, the new arrivals, and the just sold. The number of cards are based on the player count plus two. So I'm setting this up for a three-player game, so I'll deal five cards to each of the three sections. The tulips in the game come in different colors, different ranks, and different varieties. There are three different colors, yellow, red, and white tulips. Each of the colors can have an A, B, or C rank, and there's also a variety number that can range between 1, 2, and 3. There are a total of 51 tulip cards in the game, 17 of each color, but the ranking will determine the scarcity. A's are the rarest, B's are more common, and C's are the most common. Next, you'll randomly place the three tulip price markers onto the two, three, and four spot of the game board. That'll be random. You're going to separate each of the collector stacks based on their bonus value. So there's a plus 10 stack, a plus 15 stack, and a plus 20. Shuffle each stack and reveal the top card and put the rest of the stack underneath the top card. You'll notice the plus 20 only has one card in its stack. Next are the market event cards. First separate the bubble burst card then you'll shuffle the rest of the market event cards. You're going to randomly remove one and take it out of the game. Then you're going to draw two from the deck and you're going to mix the bubble burst card in with these two cards. So you'll shuffle these, shuffle those completely, and you're going to put them at the bottom of the deck. You're now going to have 10 market event cards and you know that the bubble burst is randomly somewhere in the final three cards. Next as part of setup, we're going to reveal the top card of the market events and adjust the prices accordingly. So here we randomly drew a surge card, which says that the price level of the cheapest color is raised by two. So yellow is the cheapest color, so we would raise it one, two. One of the important rules of the price track is that each space can only have one tulip marker. So when we try to raise this by one, two, we would simply move this to the next empty spot if the intended spot was occupied. Finally, each player is going to get a player screen. They're going to get three bid tokens, and they're going to receive 20 money from the bank supply, or guilders. The final step of setup is to randomly select a start player, give them the start player token, and you're ready to begin the game. Each round of the game will have four phases the event phase, selling, buying, and cleanup. To start the game for round one, we jump straight to the buying phase. Event and selling are skipped in round one. So in buying, we'll see that players are able to place bid markers and buy tulips from the new arrivals and the just sold areas. So in the buying phase, the start player for the round will go first, and then it will move clockwise. So each player will indicate which tulips they would like to buy. And this is going to happen in two cycles. In the first cycle, you may place up to two of your available bid tokens on different tulips. It's okay to place none. And then in the second cycle, you may place one of your available tokens on another tulip, even if you passed during the first cycle. So let's see how this might work. Orange is the start player. They can place up to two of their bid tokens. Let's say they decide to place here, and they're looking at the other tulips in these areas. They decide to place there. Next is green in clockwise order. Again, they can place up to two. So they think maybe they'll just place one. No, they changed their mind. They do want to place two tokens. Next is purple. They're going to decide they're only going to place one token. That's the end of the first pass. Now we go for the second pass, back to the start player. You can place up to one token now. Again, you can always place zero in either of the passes. So they'll decide, I do 
I am interested in that one. Green will place one token and they'll place it here. And purple will decide to not place any. We're going to resolve these sales from left to right. So we're going to start here and resolve this sale. We would go all of these. Then we would come down here and resolve this way. We're only resolving sales for tulips with bid tokens on them. If you're the only player with a bid token on the tulip, you must purchase the tulip at the current market price. So we can see here, orange is the only player with a marker on this tulip. It's a yellow tulip, a C rank. So we would go to the price grid. For yellow tulips, the current price for the C rank is nine. Now when you purchase a tulip, you have two options for paying. You can either pay outright with cash to the bank and you would take the tulip card behind your screen or you can finance the entire cost of the tulip, basically borrowing money from the bank. Let's say in this example, they're just gonna pay the nine cash for the tulip. They'll pay that to the bank. They would take their bid marker back and now they own this tulip outright so they can keep it hidden behind their screen. Next, we're gonna resolve this tulip card. We can see the green player is the only player with a bid token, so they have to purchase the tulip at the current market rate. We can see it's a red C, so we would go red down to the C price, so we know they have to pay five. They could pay for it outright, like the last example, or maybe they're gonna decide they wanna finance this tulip instead. So to finance a tulip, you're basically gonna place guilders from the bank onto the card. This is a reminder of the purchase price that you owe to the bank. You're gonna leave the bid marker on the card, which is now unavailable to you until this tulip has been paid for. So that's really the cost of financing tulips throughout the game. It's gonna lock up a bid marker for each tulip you have financed. Finance tulips go in front of the player versus behind their screen. As another reminder that you don't fully own that tulip yet, it needs to be paid off. And then at any time during the game, any time, you can buy this tulip outright. Basically, you would take cash, pay it to the bank, you would discard this reminder to the bank, you would take your bid marker back, and now the green player, whenever they decide to pay this off, could move the tulip behind their screen now that they own it. We'll continue left to right, resolving tulips with bid markers on them. If multiple bid tokens or markers are on the same tulip, that tulip will go to auction only between the players with bid tokens. The start player will go first, and then we go clockwise in the auction. To start, you have to bid at least one higher than the current market price or pass. So this is a red B. So we would see the current market price for a red B is seven. So the start player would at least have to bid eight to bid on this. Now they could pass. So you're gonna continue round and round until only the highest bidder remains. If no one bids, the player last in clockwise order must purchase the tulip for market price. So let's say the start player here is orange. They decide they don't wanna start the bid, they decide to pass. So green is the last player in clockwise order. So now they must purchase the tulip for the market price. So they'd have to pay seven for that tulip. But let's say in this example, both of these players are interested in this tulip. So orange is the start player. They have to bid at least one higher than market price. So they bid eight, green player bids nine, orange player bids 10, and let's say green player decides to pass. So the orange player would win this tulip for 10 guilders. Again, they can pay outright or they can decide to finance the tulip. One important rule in the game is that there is a bid premium reward whenever a tulip is bought at auction higher than the market price. So since this tulip went to auction and the winning bidder paid higher than the market price of seven, all other players with bid tokens on the tulip get to split the difference between the market price and the sale price. So since the orange player won this tulip for 10 guilders and we know the market price was seven, the green player will get three guilders from the bank just for participating in that auction.
Always remember that bid premium reward, the money is paid from the bank. It's divided between the participating players with tokens on the card, and it's rounded down. So in this example, with three tokens on the card, this is a white C. So we can see a white C has a seven market value. So the opening bid would at least have to be one higher than that. Let's say orange is the starting player. They decide to pass. They don't make an opening bid. Green says, I'll bid 10 to start, 11, 12, 13, 14, and let's say purple passes. So the green player won this tulip for 14. Again, they could pay out right or finance the card. These two players participated, even though the start player passed, but they had bid tokens on the card. So 14 minus the market value of seven is seven is the bid premium and that would have to be split between these other two players. Half of seven is 3.5 so you always round down so each of these players would get three guilders from the bank. Once you've resolved all bids in the buying phase you're now going to move to the cleanup phase. The first thing you do is going to adjust price levels by evaluating the number of tulip cards in all three of the areas. The most abundant tulip is going to drop one spot on the price track and the least abundant tulip is going to move up one spot on the price track. So in this example we always look for the most abundant tulip first to move one spot down on the price track. So as we count the cards we can see yellow is the most abundant. There's five cards out here. You look at all three areas. So we know yellow is going to move one down on the price track. And then we look for the least abundant tulip. And here it's a tie. Red has three and white has three. So they're tied, so they're both going to move one up on the price track. So you always take the most abundant tulip first, which was yellow. It'll move one down on the price track. The normal bumping rules apply, so it'll just move to the next empty. Red and white, since they're tied, they will move up together. One final point about this price adjustment. If all three tulip colors are tied, none of the markers move. The final part of cleanup is to discard all tulip cards in the new arrival and the just sold area. So all tulips in these bottom two rows, you can collect and gather, and they will get discarded up here to the tulip discard pile. Now that we finished the cleanup phase, we're ready to start a new round and move to the event phase. The first thing we do in an event phase is to draw the market event from the top of the deck. Here we can see it's a crash, so the price level of the most expensive color is lowered by two. So white's the most expensive, so one, two, and it'll go right there. Next, the shipment arrives, and we draw the shipment for the next round. So you're going to take the new or the next shipment cards and you're going to slide them down to this row. So all of these cards will slide down and then we will draw cards for the next shipment again based on how we did the setup. So the player count plus two. So again this was a three player game so I'm going to draw five new cards for that top row. So we moved the cards down, we drew the new cards. The final step of the event phase is to pass the starting player token. This will just move clockwise to the next player. The final phase we'll cover is the selling phase. This is where one at a time each player will get the chance to sell tulips. The start player will go first and then clockwise. On their turn each player may sell any or all of their tulips to either collectors and or the market. The market sale price is going to be based on the color price level on the price chart and the ABC rank. The variety number of the tulip makes no difference. The collector price is going to work the same way. It's going to be based on the market value of the cards you turn into the collector plus the bonus that the collector is offering. So let's see how this works. So in this example, this player is next to sell in clockwise order. Let's say they first want to sell this red A tulip to the market. So again, we look at red A. We can see that's a market value of 20. Whenever you sell to the market, the tulip card goes into the just sold area. 
and you'll remember based on the phases after selling comes buying. So whenever players are selling to the market, these same tulips are going to be available for purchase when we get to that buying phase. But this player sold their red A, the market value was 20, and they would just take the cash behind their screen. Finance tulips can also be sold to the market. You're either going to take or pay the difference between the market value and the financed amount. So this player financed this red B tulip earlier in the game, and now they just want to sell it to the market. So currently, red B, market value is 10, so they're simply going to break even. So they would just return this reminder token to the bank. They would now get their bid token back, and they could just place that in the just sold area. There is no limit to the number of tulips that can be sold. Now, if the current market value of red was higher and they had financed it for 10, you'd see when they sold it to the market, they would get a surplus of three. If it had crashed and it was all the way down here and they financed it at 10, when they decide to sell it, you can see the difference is seven. So they have to pay seven cash from behind their screen to sell that to the market because that's now the difference between what they financed it for and what the current market value was. But since in this example, it was at 10 and they financed 10, they simply broke even. So that's how selling to the market works. Whenever you want to sell to a collector, you have to be able to turn in all the cards that they're interested in. So you can see this collector is interested in tulips of all the same color. One of them has to be a rank A. One of them has to be a rank B, variety number one. And the third card has to be a rank B, variety number two, as long as they're all the same color. This collector wants tulips, three tulips, all three different colors, a white, a yellow, and a red, all rank B, but the variety numbers don't matter. In this example, this collector, again, wants a white, yellow, and red tulip. As long as the rank matches all A's, all B's, or all C's, and the variety number matches all 1's, all 2's, or all 3's. Probably the most important rule about selling to collectors is that the cards you turn in have to be wholly owned. You cannot turn in cards that you have financed. But always remember, you can always pay off a financed tulip whenever you like at any time during the game. So you d may decide on your sell turn, maybe you're going to sell some tulips that you own from behind the screen to get some money, and then you pay off those financed tulips so you can take them now behind your screen, and now they're available to satisfy a collector. So in this example, let's say this player had purchased these cards, they fully own them, and now they want to sell them to this collector. So it's one tulip of each of the colors. It's all the same rank. In this example, they're all C's, and they're all the same variety numbers. Variety number two, which is the fringed. So you would simply take these cards. You would now check the market value for these. So level C, one each of each color. So we can see three plus five plus seven. So that would be 15 guilders from the bank based on the market value for each of these, plus the bonus 10 from this collector. So 15 market value from the cards, plus 10, this player would get 25 guilders by selling to this collector. Whenever you sell to a collector, these cards do not go into the just sold area. Instead, they're going to go to the discard pile. Finally, whenever a player is able to sell to a collector, that collector card is discarded from the game. You would now immediately reveal the next collector card in the stack, if available. Once all players have had their chance taking their turn, remember we do this in clockwise order, so start player has their chance to make all their selling decisions, then we move to the next player. Once all players have taken their turn, that ends the selling phase. The game can end in one of two ways. The first way it can end is at the start of a buying phase. Any player with at least 120 guilders can declare that they would like to buy the Queen of the Night card. It's important that they are not allowed to have any finance tulips, so they would have had to have paid those off first and have the 120 guilders to buy the card. 
if multiple players want to buy the card at the start of the buying phase, the player with the most money simply wins. If nobody's able to buy the Queen of the Night Black Tulip and win the game that way, the other way the game will end is when the Bubble Burst card is drawn during the event phase. The game will end immediately. Any tulips that you own behind your screen are worth zero. You're not allowed to sell or buy back any cards. Finance tulips have to be paid off with any remaining cash and simply the most money will win the game. And that should be everything you need to set up and play Tulip Bubble.